CBS presents this program in color. From Television City in Hollywood. The Red Skelton Hour. Thank you very much. First of all, I've got to explain about the black eye. <laughs> now, I can tell you how I got it, and everybody say, he's lying. So I'm going to tell you how, how I got it. People say, who gave you the black eye? Well, I got it from my wife, but she didn't give it to me. I had to fight like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gertrude and Heathcliff, the two seagulls were talking. He said, you know, everybody's getting into politics. He says, the Liberty Bell's got a duck in it. There's a duck in the Liberty Bell? How do you know? He said, well, I heard somebody say they got a quack in it. <laughs> Hey, have you noticed how the, the greeting card shops down on the corner there, they got a big sign up there that says, buy a Valentine's Day card. The wife you save may be your own. <laughs> you know, women are kind of funny about Valentine's Day. My wife, Little Red, she's always reminding me in a subtle way to buy her a Valentine's Day card. See? So I pretend I don't know what she's talking about. Like yesterday, she says, what's lavender and covered with lace? I says, Liberace shorts. <laughs> And last year, I got in trouble. I got in trouble Valentine's Day. I went down to the candy store, and I said, fix a nice big heart-shaped box and fill it with sweets. See? <laughs> and I wrote a sign, a little card on it, and I said, uh, what's inside reminds me of you, and you know they filled it full of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me give you a little tip to the husbands in the audience. Never give your wife a five-pound box of chocolates for Valentine's Day, especially if she's dieting. <laughs> See, now, way, what you do may be from the heart, but that's not where it goes. <laughs> Again, another thing you must remember, you can give a girl a box of candy for Valentine's Day, and overnight she'll change from a dream boat into a tugboat. <laughs> and, you know, television has changed well, the, uh, the courting habits of America. Now, like, there was a guy who went to see his girl, <coughs> and she's got this little uh, brother of hers, see? So the guy says, hey... Here's a half a dollar. Why don't you go to a movie? And the kid says, here's a buck. Let me stay here and make notes. <laughs> About a half hour later, the little kid came back in. He says, I'll take the money. I'm going out. I didn't know this was going to be a rerun. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the teenagers, they're kind of cute with Valentine's Day. There was one little kid walked into, uh, into the store, and he says, do you have a card that reads... You're the only girl I'll ever love. The guy says, yeah, we got one like that. He says, I'll have six of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I proposed to, to Little Red, my wife, on Valentine's Day, and I remember I said to her father, can I have your daughter's hand? He says, it's all right with me, as long as you take the one that's always in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I proposed to Little Red. I, I, I said to her about five minutes, and finally I said, uh, will you marry me? And she said, yes. <laughs> And there was a long silence, and she says, haven't you got any more to say? I said, I think I've said too much already. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Willie Dahl, our stage manager, his girl got mad at him, and she sent his engagement ring back. But the way she did it was kind of sad. In a big red box, all covered with ribbons, and it said, handle with care, glass. <laughs> <laughs> He says, this is the 13th 
three times she's postponed our wedding. Do you think that's bad luck? I said, not if she keeps on doing it. <laughs> hey, but you, his girl showed me her ring, and I looked at it. I said, that's real pretty. I bet your girlfriends admire it. She says, admire it? Four of them recognized it. <laughs> I got one. The, uh, uh, the, uh, I got to tell you about the, the, uh, the eye. In Palm Springs, they have the tramway, you know. Now, they have different events up there, and before uh, Valentine's Day, they have an event where the elders, the seniors can all come up, the elderly folks. And so I went up, and you have to go as, as a teenager would go, and you can have no luxuries whatsoever, see. You gotta, so I hitchhiked a ride, see. And a big truck comes along, and the guy takes me about six miles, and he says, oh, you'll have to get off. It's as far as I'm going. So I get on the little Sun Surrey bus, and we ride up to the foothill, uh, to the tramway, and the little driver says, you'll have to get off this as far as I'm going. Everybody's nice. So we get on this big open-air bus that they have up there, and I get on, and behind me comes a, a, a big fat lady, see? And they were trying to get it in. Somebody said, turn her sideways. I said, no side to her, shove her in, see? <laughs> now we're going up this fast curve, see, and like this, and we both go right out the side of this open-air bus, but we roll down this hill, me and her, me and her. <laughs> We got down to the bottom, I looked up in her eyes, I said, you're gonna have to get off as far as I'm going. <laughs> hey, I would like to do a little pantomime now for you, if I may. It's uh, Dr. Jekyll on Valentine's Day. Dr. Jekyll. Tonight, Red Skelton as Forsooth and George Goebel as Christopher Columbus in Yo-Ho-Ho -Ho and a Bottle of Dumb. <laughs> Tonight, we bring you the true story of how America was really discovered by Forsooth Fromkus, a poor but stupid shipbuilder's apprentice. building for Christopher Columbus will never get finished. Thanks to that lazy apprentice of mine. Apprentice! Coming, Mast Boy! <laughs> <laughs> you mean master. Mast Boy's a pain in the neck. Coming, Mast Boy! <laughs> Good heavens, call the doctor. I think I got the mumps. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. That's a mermaid, half woman, half fish. Well, I haven't been around very much. Tell me, which half is fish? <laughs> That's not important. It is on Friday. <laughs> Get down from there. Nose, 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 nose. That's right next to eye, eye, sir. Get down here. I got all kind of clever things like that, I say. When you're around the shipyard, you learn things like that, you know. Yes, sir, you learn things like that around the shipyard. Oh, there's the dinghy. My wife is going to buy me. <laughs> oh, sir, I wish you'd give me a seat belt the next time you belt me in the seat. Oh, just get to work. Oh. Pick up that little boy there and take it to the poop deck. Oh, how come I do all the work and the, do the, the, the deck is poop? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> Just one minute. I want to see that again. Well, you'll have to wait for the summer reruns, buddy. <laughs> Donald's broke my foot. Get a bottle of iodine. Must we drink to everything? <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for my stupidity, you'd get no exercise at all. <laughs> all right, let's get to work. We must secure this rope. All right, we'll secure the rope. All right. I've got it. You've got it. Yeah. All right. You swing the mallet, and I'll hold the spike. All right. Now, he ought to know better than that. <laughs> I could get killed, couldn't I? Yeah, I've got... How about this? Me swing the mallet, and you hold the spike. That's better. That's right, darling. <laughs> All right, now. Just hit the head. Huh? Just hit the head. Oh, this guy's asking. <laughs> I didn't know which head you meant, sir, so I hit them both so I wouldn't appear stupid. Oh, oh. I I'm getting a lump. Good heavens, drive it back in. There's a lump. <laughs> the arrival of Queen Isabella and Christopher Columbus, explorer, navigator, and real good sport. <laughs> Carry me, I meant financially. Columbus, what are you looking at? Well, when you're an explorer, explore everything. <laughs> and you still insist that the world is round? It sure is from here. I can't give you the money to buy the boats, Chris. But I have something better than money. So I've noticed. <laughs> Your jewels. Right. Here. A solid gold ankle bracelet. Oh, that should get me across the Atlantic. And a diamond studded garter. Oh, that should get me across the Pacific. Yeah. What's the matter? I was just thinking, this is a heck of a time to run out of ocean. <laughs> now, I must return to the palace, but I'll tell King Ferdinand that my jewels were stolen. Yeah. Because, see, it won't be the first time someone has given Ferdinand the bull. <laughs> Or else it's a snake wearing a monocle. <laughs> now, let's see, where's America? You, if it, what? Uh, must be closer than I thought. Here comes a red-headed Indian. <laughs> oh, look what you did. I'm supposed to discover America. With one eye, I'll be lucky if I can find CBS. <laughs> hey, you out there, now, come on, do you know I've got a telescope in my eye. No, but I know the drum part to Winchester Cathedral. <laughs> you should say, man with telescope in eye has plenty of foresight. Is that what he said? Huh? That's what he said. He didn't get many laughs, did he? Huh? <laughs> but I'll tell you something, he cleans up on reruns on fortune cookies. <laughs> now just get this, don't touch me like that. <laughs> Unless you're directed. <laughs> I learned that in the theater. Now, just get this prescription clarinet out of my eye. Is that what that is? For heaven's sakes, I thought your contact lens had thyroid condition. <laughs> I'll help you there. Ooh, wait a minute, I'll fix it. Which is your uh, music ear? Uh, the red one. That's the one with the queen's lipstick on the lobe. Hmm? <laughs> You not only got rid of the spyglass, but you blew out my sinuses. Well, I hope we land in Mexico. I can sell this to the Tijuana Brass. 
All right. Now, I am Christopher Columbus, and I have a deadline to discover America by October 12th. Well, now, why don't we start now, sir? Start now? Mm hmm? It isn't finished. It's just a hull of a ship. <laughs> What's your language? There's a woman present. Even if she doesn't have a head. Yeah. Say, this reminds me of an old girlfriend. Yeah? You know, I used to go with a maid mer. You mean mermaid? No. On her, the top part was a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on overboard for her. <laughs> yeah, but you sunk with it tonight, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's good, good to have her along, though. In case you run short of money, you ready? She yeah. can slip you a fin. <laughs> I see land. Land ahead. No, it's only some dirt under my fingernail. <laughs> well, I may as well head for that. It's better than nothing at all. Captain Columbus, sir. Huh? They say the ocean at the world's edge is full of monsters and sea serpents. Son, you better lay off of them animal crackers. <laughs> there are no such things as sea serpents or monsters. Correction! Sea serpents! Monster! Good heaven! Are you two dancing or is this the honeymoon crew? <laughs> Sir, it's a shipbuilder's apprentice. Well, it's either that or we're sailing in a circle and backing into our own garbage. <laughs> Mind if I go with you to America, sir? I want to go to Detroit and pick up a new car. <laughs> you, you're a big dumb nut. Cars won't be invented for 500 years. Well, good, then the traffic won't be so heavy on the freeway. <laughs> if you want to stay aboard here, you got to work. I'm short of hands. You're a little short of legs, too, ain't you? <laughs> I don't know. They both touch the floor. <laughs> Very good for openers. Yeah. It comes in handy. I can tie my shoelaces without bending. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody works aboard this ship. What can you do to earn your salt? Salt? What do I look like? A herring? <laughs> well, if you are and you meet a girl herring as captain, <laughs> I can marinate you at sea. <laughs> gave you all the gyms, didn't they? <laughs> how can That's why they call it Columbia Gym of the Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you did that one yourself. Yes, you know. I did. Okay. Hey, that's pretty... <laughs> that's pretty good. They gave you five bells. On five that bells. Yeah. Five bells. How much is that in our money? Well, either the ship's on fire or it's the cocktail hour. Sir, I smell something burning. Well, must be the cocktail hour. You see, we serve Mexican hors d'oeuvres. You serve Mexican food? He gads. You realize that you've invented the first gas-driven boat? <laughs> May I present the cabin boys? The cabin boys? The boys who inspired this voyage. Mm, say, they would do it. <laughs> this is Nina Pinta and Maria. What happened to Santa? Well, you'll have to wait for Christmas for him. <laughs> I don't know, then stockings are pretty well filled, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yeah. sir. Huh? What would you like on the rocks? Oh, anything but the ship. <laughs> what do you got in mind? If you want a cocktail. Can we pull in somewhere? Huh? <laughs> if you want a cocktail, I'll have to get my shaker. I could have sworn she had it with her. There's no ice cube. I don't know about ice, yeah. but I know how to make ice water. How, oh, sir? Eat some, some onions. onions. That'll, That'll make, make your eyes water. <laughs> After that one, uh, sir, may I request permission to drown myself? <laughs> permission granted. <laughs> That'll earn him. I moved the mattress. <laughs> 
No, that's what I call a doggone shame. Yeah, it is. Now we got three girls and only two fellas. Yeah. And an extra girl, that changes it from a party to a picnic. <laughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I'm still missing the ice cubes. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think you're missing anything. <laughs> I'll tell you what, just follow me. Four points to the starboard. Seven points port. Three points to the larboard. Give a little, uh... <laughs> What are you doing? I don't know why I'm using this. We haven't even discovered tobacco yet. <laughs> Hi, she made a bigger splash than the guy. Hey, make up your mind. You want me to go left or right? Just go straight. Here comes our ice. Oh, iceberg! Oh. Hey, you know there's no pockets in this house. <laughs> Better living through chemistry. <laughs> Here we are. Thank you, Chris. Uh. I know when, I'm trying to figure out where. <laughs> Thank you. There you are. That's mighty dry wine, you know that? There you are. Mm. No thanks, I'm driving. <laughs> Go on, second thought. Chris. Land! Land! Looks like boo. <laughs> I hope you like that drink, sir. It's 800 proof tequila. <laughs> Not in there. That's the wrong kind of powder room. <laughs> oh, shucks and darn, he's landed in America before me. That's not fair. Don't cry, Chris, baby. Yeah, but 300 days down the drain. Forget the days. At least we got a chance to know each other. That's true. And I'll never forget the Knights of Columbus. <laughs> October 12, 1492. Well, it looks like the opening of the discovery season. Yeah, just what we needed, an explorer from Europe. Yeah. Well, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> Mercy, there are parking meters everywhere. Uh, you better go send a telegram to Queen Isabella and tell her that we arrived safely. Oh, and I better send it collect. The world may be round, but I'm flat. Friends, Romans, and Pawnees, I hereby claim this country in the name of the kingdom of... Ah! It wasn't ouch, it was Spain. Boy, get him. Hey, I feel like I'm leading a parade and everybody made the wrong turn. Now, will you cut it out? Cut it out. Just pull it. It'll come. Oh, there. Now, look oh. here. I've got to officially take over this country or I can't write off this trip as a business deduction. <laughs> All right. Tell me, what do you want to name this uh, country? We've got to uh, give it a name, you know, so we'll know who we're, uh, their, the other countries will know who they're borrowing from. Borrowing? Borrowing. <laughs> Well, well let's see. Indian word ball. I'll name it after America's Vespucci. I'll call it Vespucci. <laughs> How do you spell Vespucci? I'll call it America. <laughs> what are you going to give us for America? Well, nothing really, but if you play your cards right, we'll name a baseball team after you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 
Actually, we are not obligated, you know, because... Because this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yeah, you gotta be brave to think you're getting something free. Yeah. Well, anyway, here we go again, friends. Discovery of America, take six. Thank you. I, Christopher Columbus, <laughs> being of sound mind. Oh, Chris, do you want me for anything? No. <laughs> you call that being of sound of mind? <laughs> Come on now, will you let me get this country discovered so I can go back to Spain and show off? Discovery of America, take seven. <laughs> I'm going to keep on doing it until I get to laugh because I think it's. Funny. <laughs> you know what? I'll start all over. We'll take it from the top. All right. Discovery of America, take eight. <laughs> We're getting there. I want to start all over. Like I said, I'm going to take it from the top. Yeah, well, your top ain't too far from the bottom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the first Nielsen rating. <laughs> All righty, Roo. America, this is your last chance to be discovered. If this doesn't work, Columbus, Ohio will be known as that city there near Cincinnati. <laughs> now, just one discovering grabbing minute. Will you hurry up, please? I'm running out of doubloons for the parking. <laughs> here. Yeah. Oh, well, I happen to be the customs officer, the, he the health officer. That ain't too healthy, is it? The health officer, the immigration officer. Oh, he didn't last long at all, did he? And uh, that one. <laughs> what? What's that one for? That one's to hold my leotards up. <laughs> mercy, mercy, you are the pushy one. Mm. You've only been here one day. Now, how did you, <laughs> how did you get all those political jobs? We got an actor in the family. <laughs> now you. We're not you, sure, are you? No. <laughs> you you got to tell me what your name is. I can't put you down just as a little fellow wearing sissy stockings. You know? <laughs> I'll say what I do. I'll identify myself. Oh. This is a mirror. A mirror? Never saw one. Yep, that's me. Let me see that. You say that's you? I say that's me. Oh, you're wrong. That's me. Let me see that. You say it's you? I say it's me. Who do you say it is? It's me. Who says it's you? You're hers? both nuts. It's the head of a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now, before I let you come ashore, do you have any visible means of support? Ab I mean, outside of your two-way stretch. <laughs> Absolutely none. Mm. I'm broke. I am bankrupt. Mm. Well, what can you do for the country? Start a depression. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. You'll have to go back. We've already got elected officials to take care of that. <laughs> now, tonight, our guest, a talented comedian and actor, and a star of his own beef stew commercial. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <and> George Goble. <laughs> Here, Batman. <laughs> what are you doing with that stuff? You're too short for the little league. Oh, look, if, if, if I wanted to be insulted about my height, I didn't have to come down here, Red. I could have stayed home and been insulted by my wife and my three tall children. You mean your children are taller than you are? Everybody's taller than me. <laughs> Not to mention everybody's children. <laughs> and now that we've gotten that out of the way. <laughs> Do you care to know what I'm doing with this baseball paraphernalia? Yeah, is it funny? Well, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna try out with the Los Angeles Dodgers to replace Sandy Koufax, because we have something in common. What's that? Neither one of us has ever pitched on Yom Kippur. <laughs> think that's funny? I think oh, that's boy, funny. Laugh. You can laugh. I'll laugh. You folks out there, if you want to, you can laugh. <laughs> In fact, I wish somebody would. You know. <laughs> but I happen to throw one of the best curveballs in the business. You're joshing. I wouldn't josh you. Oh, I just hold it. I okay. always wind up with an old bat. <laughs> oh, and I know it's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> Nothing. 
Want to see a curve, my boy? Anything special you'd like me to do while you're getting ready? No, just stand there and look like you're painted there. <laughs> you have a very poor attitude, you know? <laughs> Thanks, fella. <laughs> well, that's what I call a curve. Well, I, got, I got to go along with you there. Now, how did you throw that? And who struck me with this ball? Uh, he did. He did. Well, here's your ball. Thank you. And here's your bat. <laughs> Honey, we got to work on the squeeze play. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, the, the Dodgers can use anybody that can throw a curve like that. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> Don't stare, folks. I'm just as surprised as you. <laughs> and now, The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton. Tonight, star-struck Red gets a job as a car hop across from a Hollywood movie studio, hoping to be discovered.
Here he is again, Red Skelton. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsors and staff, we sincerely hope that our entertainment and our products have brought happiness into your homes. We'll say goodbye for now. Until next week, goodbye, and may God bless. Good night, and thank you. You can hit the hay while we stalk the way, cause there's no more fun to raise. But our food and show will return, you know, in exactly seven days. So goodbye until the moment when we'll see you all again. To our friends near and far. This is Art Gilmore speaking.